Okay, well, welcome to AT and ID 350. Hopefully, um, you are um, in Monday, Tuesday of the first week of the semester that you are listening to this. Um, and Lecture 1.1 is going to serve two purposes. First, it's going to introduce you a little bit to me. And second, it's going to introduce you to some of the basics of this course and how it's going to function um, since it is an online course. And I know that for oh, some of you, this will be your first online class that you've taken. And so I want to make sure everybody is very comfortable in how Canvas is set up and how you're expected to navigate your way throughout the course. So those of you who don't know me, my name is Dr. Kim Hiller. Some of you I have taught in AT245, uh, and a lot of you I haven't taught before. Just so everybody is aware, this class is a required class for apparel and textile students and interior design students, so you will be mixed um, together. However, it's also a course that meets K-State 8 requirements for a wide range of students across campus. So there will be non-apparel and textile students in this class as well as non-interior design students. So you will um, be interacting with a fairly wide range of students. Um, and email is always the best way to reach me. I um, will respond to emails Monday through Friday um, during business hours and typically will respond within 24 hours. I do my best to do that. I do have an office on campus, I should say, obviously. I teach on campus, I'm on campus, and since a lot of you will also be on campus this semester, you are welcome to come to my office if you have questions. Um, it's in Justin Hall. Just send me an email and set up a time to meet with me. That's totally um, fine, um, even though it's an online class, obviously, you can meet with me face to face as well. So just a little bit about who I am. I actually was born and raised in Canada. Um, I have lived in the United States for almost 20 years though. Um, but I was born in a small town in the province of Alberta. Alberta is the second province to the west, so right above Idaho and Montana. Um, I grew up in a little town in the Rocky Mountains and lived there, born, raised there, lived there until I graduated high school. When I graduated high school, I moved into the city of Edmonton, which is currently sitting at about a million people. It's one of the largest cities in um, Canada. And I went to the University of Alberta, which is the second largest university in Canada. So it's a huge university, plopped down in the middle of the city. And there I um, did my Bachelor of Science in Apparel and Textiles. Uh, after my undergraduate degree, I went on to do graduate study work. Um, I got married, we moved to, to the United States, and I did my master's degree and my PhD actually at Michigan State University. And um, both of my degrees, graduate degrees, are also in apparel and textiles, but I have done a lot of extra work and specializations in international development and in environmental science and policy. So after I graduated with my PhD, I, um, my husband and I moved directly to Manhattan and I started a job here at Kansas State University. And we have actually been here for 10 full years now. And um, I've been in the Department of Apparel and Textiles and Interior Design that whole time. And um, we uh, have, I guess, really integrated ourselves within um, the city of Manhattan. So, as I mentioned, I am married. My husband's name is Jeff, and we have one daughter who's nine years old, and her name is Ava. Um, and some of you who've had classes with me before have heard stories about Ava. 
Um, Ava is a very active little girl. She uh, is involved in a lot of different sports. I just have a picture here of her. Um, she's in track and field. She's a sprinter and a long jumper. Um, so this is just a picture of her from one of her track meets. Um, so yeah, we spend a lot of our time when I'm not at work um, driving Ava around um, and going to various different sporting events of her. Um, other little facts about me, um, we coach uh, Ava's softball team every year. So this um, picture on this slide is from the summer of 2018 softball season. I'm also a Girl Scout leader. And so I have a picture here of um, my Girl Scout troop and a trip that we took to sleep over one night at the Omaha Zoo. And when I'm not volunteering or driving my daughter around places, I do also like to do triathlons very um, amateurly um, where you swim, bike, and run. And so here is just a picture of me with one of my friends who I um, do triathlons with. So that's just a little bit about me. One of the things you're going to be doing this week um, and next week is sharing a little bit about yourself so that we get to know who you are as well. So let's talk a little bit about this sustainability course. This is, as we've said, a required course for all of the students who are in our program, um, our programs. Uh, and this is really a very broad overview of what is sustainability. We are not going to be talking anything specific about the apparel textiles industry in this course. We won't be using anything from interior design or building construction. It's very broad, very holistic, the approach we take. And the idea is we want everybody who takes this class to understand what are the big sustainability challenges that are facing us today, um, what is sustainability, why we're facing these challenges, why we have these big problems that we need to solve, um, and how we can go about actually solving those problems. So that's really what this course is doing, is introducing you to the problems, helping you understand why we've gotten to a place where these are problems, and then really thinking about what are some solutions to these problems. And another really big important thing of this course is to really be able to understand how all of these problems are connected with each other. So we don't, um, we can't talk about um, climate change, for example, without also talking about water or without also talking about population growth and things like that. Um, and then the other really big thing that we're trying to do in this course is develop throughout the semester, a learning environment um, where you're able to really start to think about what's important to you related to sustainability, um, how you feel about sustainability issues, uh, and how, how all that impacts your life and how you live your life. Okay, so what do you need for this course? Well, obviously you need a computer. It's an online class. Um, this class, um, Sure, there's elements of the class that you could do on your phone or on your tablet, um, but do not rely on an iPad or whatever to get the bulk of the work done for this class. There will be typing and other things that you need to do that will just be much more effective on an actual computer. You need to have reliable internet access, which shouldn't be a problem um, during a 16-week 16 16 week regular semester course like we have. Um, and then there's also a textbook that we use in this class. Good news is it's online, it's free, um, so you don't actually have to pay for it. All right, so as I said, I also want to talk a little bit uh, briefly about how this course is structured. We will go into more of the structure and elements of the course throughout module one, uh, but this is sort of the basics of it. So obviously we use Canvas every day in this course. That is how I deliver the content. That is how you interact with your peers. It's how you complete your tests and your assignments. The course is structured into eight modules. And because it's a 16 week course, we do one, module every two weeks approximately, except for when we get to the end of the semester, um, it runs a little bit different for our last module. Every module uh, is 
under the modules tab of the course. So it's not rocket science here. You go into the AT slash ID course that should show up on your um, dashboard in Canvas. Um, you go into the course, you click on modules, and then you will see module one, module two, module three. That, in all honestly, honesty, is the only part of Canvas for this course that you need to go. Anything you need to complete, anything you need to submit, anything you need to discuss, chat, or whatever should be able to be found through the modules tab. That being said, you can go to other sections to find things, but your best bet is just to go to modules and you will find, um, find everything you need. Um, so then you can see here um, that under module one, which is the module we're working on right now, it's sort of our orientation and our introduction to sustainability module. And then you can see all the various different components listed that you need to complete to complete module one. They're kind of listed in a chronological order. So you want to complete lecture 1.1 before you complete lecture 1.2. So you kind of just work your way down the module list every week. The only exception to that is your discussions. You want to keep going back to the discussions, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and sometimes homework assignments and things like that might be slightly out of order. Okay, so as far as what you're required to do in this class, every module has a fairly similar structure, uh, although from week to week, there will be slight differences. Pretty much every module, there are lectures, like you're listening to right now. Um, the way I have the lectures set up is they are in PowerPoint, and I have audio recorded myself delivering the lecture to you. It is going to be very important that you take the time to listen and watch those lectures. Um, I would encourage you to take notes, just like you take notes in any other class. There are quizzes in this course that you will be able to then rely back on those notes to answer those quizzes. So there are going to be anywhere between three to five lectures every module. There are also a series of readings and videos that you will watch throughout the various different modules. The readings are all either in that free textbook that I talked to you about, or I've provided you a link to another um, lecture. Every module, almost every module, has two quizzes. When we get near to, nearer to the end of the semester, um, there will only be one quiz for a couple of the modules. But for the most part, there are two quizzes. About halfway through a module, you will do a practice quiz. And the idea of that practice quiz will just be to look over um, what, um, to review what we've already covered in that module, to see where you're at, what you remember, etc. And then at the end of every, every module, there's a final module quiz. Now, a couple of things to point out about the differences between these two. Practice quizzes. Um, you get a complete incomplete grade, essentially. That factors into your final gr um, participation score for the end of the semester. So if you complete the quiz, you get a participation point. If you don't get complete the quiz, you don't get the point. Um, and those accumulate throughout the semester. But what your score is on that practice quiz, it doesn't really matter. You can take that quiz once, you can take it 10 times until you feel like you've started to master that material. At the end of the semester, at the end of the module, there is a quiz that counts for points. Um, usually each of those quizzes are worth 25 points and you can take those quizzes multiple times until you feel like you've gotten a grade that you're happy with. You could take it eight times, as long as it's completed before the module is over. However, your final grade for that quiz is an average of every time that you've taken the quiz. So if you take it three times, um, we will average out your score on those three times and you will get that average. Um, module quizzes become available for you to take 
once we're halfway through a module. So each module, as I said, lasts for about two weeks. So you will not be able to take that module, the module quiz for that module until the first week of the module has passed. So I will publish that quiz by Monday of the second week of every module, if that makes sense. Okay, um, there's a final quiz at the end of the semester. Um, it is 50 points instead of 25, and you only can take it once, and it's cumulative. Every module, there are group discussions that you'll be participating in, and I actually have a completely separate lecture that talks about that and the expectations of that that is in a, um, another lecture here in Module 1, so I'm not going to say anything more about that right now. Most of the modules have homework assignments. These are usually small things that will take 30 minutes or less to do, um, and you get credit or no credit for them. And then finally, there is a case study project, and this is a team project. And again, um, I have a future lecture that explains the case study project in more detail. All right, so a couple of things to just help you um, understand what my expectations are. First of all, I have a lot of course policies and expectations spelled out in my syllabus, so make sure that you um, have read that syllabus. Uh, but a couple of other just general things. Um, every Monday I will be emailing you. Um, I will for sure send you out a Monday message every Monday morning, and that will give you an overview of the module, what you're supposed to be working on that week, what things to be on the lookout for, what things to start work, um, what working on, etc. In addition to that Monday message, I usually send out several other emails on Mondays um, with some other reminders or updates and things like that. I would say that you should plan on spending about seven and a half hours per week or about 15 hours every two weeks on this class. And um, the biggest advice that I have for you is to look at your calendar right now and block out those hours. So yes, this is an online class. So the advantage of that is you can work on it at 9 o'clock at night. You could work on it at 6 in the morning, whatever works in your schedule. However, you cannot wait until Sunday at 10 o'clock at night to try and get this coursework done. You need to be working on it every other day, every day, however you work best. So I would look at my calendar and I would say, okay, I have two hours every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 9 until 11 where I don't have any courses. So I'm going to just on my calendar say 9 to 11 Monday, Wednesday, Friday is when I'm going to work on a T350 work. Um, and then you can squeeze in sort of remaining work and hours that you might need around the rest of your schedule. Um, but the students who generally do the best in this course are the students that follow that advice and find time schedule it out and make sure that they are very dedicated and consistent to working on the course during those hours. Um, assignments are, because this is an online class, assignments are always due by midnight. So of whatever day. And the due dates will vary. A lot of due dates are on Sundays. Um, generally speaking, I will think of the module as starting in the morning on Monday and lasting for two weeks and ending on Sunday at 11.59 p.m. And so if something doesn't have a due date specified, just assume it's due the Sunday that the module ends by midnight. But in the syllabus and on Canvas, all of the due dates are listed and very much specified. And then the last piece of um, information for this particular lecture is um, just word of advice, I am not an IT person. I cannot help solve technical problems for you because I just don't have the knowledge. So if you are having problems with your computer or Canvas or whatnot, I need you to go to the IT help desk or call the IT help desk and have them walk you through it. Um, and 
they will be able to solve your problems for you um, much quicker and effectively than I will be able to. Okay, so that's our first lecture. Um, and I um, will move on um, and in the next lecture start to talk about other elements of this class.